Welcome to the first video in our how-to series. In these videos, we'll share our process, our tools, and our favorite gadgets for making some of the repetitive tasks easier, faster, and safer. We'll show you what to do, and what not to do, while being transparent about the mistakes we've made over the years. Because it's good to learn from your mistakes, but even better to learn from someone else's. If you find this video to be helpful, you can help us out by clicking the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to our channel. Now we're going to get set up, we're going to try to film the whole process. We've had a, a few people ask us um, what it's like getting set up, how long does it take. So we'll show you every step here, except for probably the Starlink setup, because one, there's a lot of trees here. I'm not sure if Starlink's going to work. We'll test that out either way and let you know. Um, if not, we'll just use our fallback, which is to tether with our phones. Gonna go find our spot, get backed in, get level left to right, unhook the truck, get level front to back, and then we'll put in the X chocks. Um, after that, we'll connect the electricity, put out the slide out, uh, connect the water sewer, and that's all there is to it. It wasn't so much of a back in, but uh, kind of a pull through and weird because our connections are over there, but we'll just run everything under the trailer. Um, now we're gonna get level left to right. So we're gonna use these Anderson blocks, just big pieces of plastic. You roll up on it until the Level Main Pro measures level until we get the green light. Now, very important, we'll chalk the other side of the tires and chalk the tires on the other side. We made a big mistake one time in our first season of uh, traveling with the travel trailer. We put these under the tires. They're actually facing the other way, so pushing us backward. We did not chalk the tires. We disconnected the truck and the trailer started rolling away. Um, it didn't go far, luckily, because there was a river right behind us, but now we always remember either the truck or the chocks. We want to level the trailer front to back. So that means disconnecting the truck. We'll use the Level Mate Pro one more time and uh, just raise and lower the tongue jack until it reads level. And then after that, we'll do the X chocks. Um, just because there is a little bit of movement in the tires or in the whole trailer as you level. So we want to be level before we connect those X chocks. So we have to disconnect everything from the trailer, the chains, the seven way cable, the emergency brake release. Taking off my watch because I tend to scrape it on things when I'm doing this part. Honey Bunch usually helps me during this time, but uh, since she doesn't want to be on camera, I told her I'll do it solo. Hopefully I don't forget it. So we're moving the anti-sway bar. That thing just helps decrease, doesn't eliminate, but helps decrease the uh, trailer sway. I like to put all the pins on the other pin. Okay, we generally put about four blocks under the tongue jack. The less you extend the tongue jack, the, the more stable it is. We have two sets of 10 of these stacking blocks. All the rest are gonna go under the, um, the stabilizer jacks. So and lower the tongue jack just enough to relieve the pressure on the uh, weight distribution arms here. And then after I move the arms, we'll lift it far enough up to get the truck out from under it. It's important to keep all your pins together. And these just twist and then release.
we keep them there for the duration of the camping. So we're gonna send this high enough to get off of the ball hitch. It's always a good idea to make sure you're chocked just one more time. So now we'll extend this further than we need to go. And then we'll bring it back to get level after we pull the truck out. Occasionally it'll pull the truck up with it. Sometimes you have to give it a little nudge and it'll drop out, but looks like we got it pretty good this time. So you just need just enough clearance to get out of there. And then we also like to hang our chains right up there. Okay, so I'm gonna pull the truck out. So now we're gonna use this one more time and get level front to back. The app is connected to a little receiver that's inside the pass-through. And the app's telling me I need to go down about an inch and a half or an inch and a quarter. be connecting the electric um, and then after that we'll do the slide out. Whenever it's available I like to have shore power connected before we pull out the slide. Uh, that way it's not just using battery power. It'll work on battery power especially now that our battery is working again thanks to our replaced power converter. Um, but yeah so I'm going to connect shore power. I'm also going to put in that x chalk and then we will extend the slide. This is our little ramp for our stinky slinky. And this is our 50 amp power cable with surge protector. Okay, so this is our power pedestal, water connection, and then sewer connections down there. Everything's usually on the other side, but this is this one's a little backwards. Uh, for that reason, we have extension cords, extension hoses. Uh, but since we're able to kind of get right back in the corner here, I don't think we're gonna need any of that. Whenever you connect your power, you wanna make sure the breaker is turned off first. And then what I like to do is connect the surge protector, make sure these three lights light up, which means it's clean power, no surges, nothing missing or no, uh, no problems with the connection basically. Okay, and before connecting the trailer, I'm gonna turn this on, make sure I get a good reading, make sure I get surge protection. So that looks good. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it back off and then connect the trailer. Okay, so that side's plugged in, still off, and I'm gonna go connect the trailer side of it. Okay, so this just connects and then this will thread on. Okay, doesn't have to be super tight, but that's that. And now I'm clear to turn on the power breaker on the, on the power pedestal. And then if everything's working properly, you hear some beeps from the inside. The fridge will switch over to electric power. Actually, I'm getting a bad reading from that now. So I'm gonna unplug that. This is why we use the surge protector. That's actually never happened before. I'm kind of glad we caught it on video. Hopefully it's not a real issue. Okay, turn that off. Connect this again. Okay, I'm not really sure what happened there. I'm definitely gonna keep an eye on it, but that's what we wanna see. I think when it turned on, I got a red light on the first one. So that either means reverse polarity, leg one or leg two ground reversed. Not really sure why that happened, but it looks okay now. Like I said, we'll keep an eye on that for sure. So now we are power connected. I'm gonna connect the X chalk on the other side and then uh, extend the slide. These are the X chocks that I was talking about, and they go right in between the tires here. And what they do is just prevent any front and back movement. The trailer still rocks a little bit left to right. The stabilizer jacks that I'll use, I'll show you those in a little bit. Um, it's probably the last thing that we do, but 
Those stabilizer jacks are not meant for leveling. There are leveling jacks, and that's pretty common on a, a fifth wheel or a motorhome. Um, but these are specifically stabilizer jacks. They're not meant to hold the weight of the trailer, but they do prevent a lot. They're very noticeable when they're not on. Um, prevent a lot of the movement that you feel from left to right. Okay, and those don't need to be crazy tight. One thing to watch out for when you're using the Anderson blocks, if you're not far enough up on the block, it will kind of stick out here and actually get in the way of the X-Chalk. So if we have to go up less than an inch, we'll generally just use our yellow stacking blocks and usually just need one or two of them under there. You could even do just one under one tire. I've heard that that will level you in quarter of an inch. One under both tires will level you about a half an inch and then more blocks from there. But yeah, if we have to go an inch or more, We'll use the Anderson blocks every time. Now we're ready for the slot. So Honey Bunch is inside. She's gonna actually record on the inside to show how much uh, the inside space expands when the slide is out. And then we'll show you what happens on this side. There's a button on the panel on the inside to extend the slide. And you can also do it with the app. Although Honey Bunch is using my phone to record right now. So Honey Bunch is gonna do all of this part and I'm just gonna give her the thumbs up. It's good to have someone, if you can, have someone on the inside and the outside. I mean, we're pretty clear here, but you always want to make sure it's not going to hit anything. And same with the inside. You want to make sure nothing's getting pinched in there. Okay, baby. Pretty much all done here. Uh, the only other things I'm going to do now is connect the water, although we have some water in the freshwater tank, so if anyone wanted to use the sinks or the bathroom right now, they could. We are also going to connect the sewer connection. I'll show you that. I know everyone's really excited and curious about how that works. It's actually much more simple and sanitary than it sounds. Um, but yeah, that's most of the setup. this to the other side because I still have the other x chalk to install. And this is our water connection. We have a water filter at the end. Um, this is kind of the, the cheapest solution you can get for a water filter. There are more permanent ones. Uh, we haven't invested in anything like that yet, but I think it's in our future. So the hose will feed up through this little pass-through hole. This is our pressure regulator, so you want to make sure you're not exceeding 50 or 60 PSI. Um, you'll find the settings for your RV in your manual, but definitely something you want to pay attention to. And like I said, this setup's a little weird. All the connections are on the opposite side as normal. So I'm actually going to send the hose under the RV and um, hope it makes it. If not, I have another hose that connect to it. So no tools necessary, just hand tight. If you do have issues, like I said in the previous video, it's always helpful to have those um, rubber washers that you can shore up your connection with. So run into a bit of an issue with the plastic part hitting the lever here, but um, hopefully that's okay. We'll see what happens when we turn the water on. That is not okay. Okay, water off again. All right, so on second thought, or third thought, I'm going to go back to just this because this little yellow part is hitting this and not getting tight enough to make a seal. So I do have a rubber washer in there. So it is still hitting, but I think I can get it tighter this way. 
right, so that is tight. And we'll try it one last time. Okay, it looks good. The drips you're seeing are actually from the mess I made earlier. Uh, there's no water pooling up at the top here, so I think we're good to go. I'm gonna roll that up on the other side just to keep it nice and make sure there's no kinks. And then I'm gonna connect the sewer. As promised, the x shock on the other side. Okay, I'm gonna leave that wrench right there so it's right where I need it next time. We won't need it until we're doing the teardown, getting ready to leave here in about a week. Okay, it's stinky slinky time. I've got the camera here so you can actually see the sewer connection over there, the outlet on the trailer, and I'm gonna do this all at once without moving the camera because I don't like to touch anything in between. I do wear gloves, but my general process is to make all the connections and then put the gloves away and then go wash my hands before touching anything else. So I do use these reusable waterproof gloves. I spray them down with Clorox after use and then they just stay in a little container that I keep in the pass-through. I used to use disposable rubber gloves but inevitably you run out of them before you buy new ones and then you might have a day where you have no gloves. So this is one of our new additions, a magnetic, that's gray water. Uh, magnetic bumper end connected to the Stinky Slinky. Most RV bumpers are made to hold these. That way you don't have to put it in with your pass-through or in your truck or basically anywhere where any other stuff is. And then this can be extended. We have a second one of these. Maybe necessary. We'll see if this reaches. No drips, thanks to the Valterra valve. All right, it looks like we're about a foot short. So I will be using the connection, the extender. And then one other piece you need is the actual uh, we use a clear elbow, sounds kind of gross, but it's a clear section so you can see that it actually is draining when you drain your tanks and that you can tell when it's done draining. Okay, so this is what will connect to the sewer inlet over there. I also keep this in a uh, extra battery box on the tongue of the trailer so it doesn't go inside the truck or inside the pass-through or doesn't have to be near anything that we use. That is the Stinky Slinky. Considering rerouting that electric around, I just don't like for things to touch if they don't have to. I need to wash my hands before I do anything else. I did clean up the routing a little bit on the electrical cord. I wrapped it around the water and the sewer connection, so that way nothing's touching. It doesn't really matter, uh, but you know, I like to have clean cable routing whenever I can. Before we dump, we will most definitely use the Stinky Slinky stand. It's like a I'll go grab it. So this thing extends and then it gives you a slope so that the hose will drain properly. Um, if we don't, some places do require it, but if we don't use it, we'll just lift up the hose, let it drain, no big deal. I did forget one part. That is the stabilizer jacks. So I'm gonna lower those real quick and then we'll officially be done. The RV does come with a hand crank for this, but this is the easy way to do it. We're going to lower these just enough that they're touching, that there's pressure, but we don't want to lift the trailer with it. Again, they are stabilizer jacks, not leveling jacks. So 
that's it. Wanna make sure you're not coming down on any cables here or hoses. Thanks for tuning in. Those are the basic setup steps for almost any travel trailer, but there could be others depending on your specific rig and your gear. We left out the interior setup, which Honeybunch takes care of while I'm outside, as well as some of the finishing touches like outdoor rugs, chairs, picnic table covers, and a fireplace. If you have any questions, advice, or favorite tricks to share, please leave a comment and we'll be sure to reply. You can bookmark this video and pause right here if you ever need a reference on the road. And we'll provide a link to a printable list in the description below. Thanks again, and we'll see you again soon.